great to have you back with us as our travels through New Zealand continues. We are setting sails through the enchanting waters of Bay of Islands, embarking on a voyage that will bridge centuries of history, culture and adventure. Join us as we trace the footsteps of Captain James Cook, whose explorations of these waters mark the dawn of European contact with New Zealand. started at Russell, at the main anchorage, and you can see our path by the dash lines. And we are going around the point, and we are going to sail over to Cook's Cove, where Cook landed 1789? 1780, roughly, give or take 10 years. <laughs> and this is actually we're planning anchor. Motu Arovia Island. So where are we right now? So Sakuratai, 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 all stations, all stations. Okay. This is Maritime so Radio. Right Maritime here? Radio. We left Brussels in somewhat gloomy weather, but soon sunshine came out and the sailing was absolutely perfect. As we approached the Cook's Cove, I couldn't help but to marvel at the bravery and curiosity that drove the former navigator to chart these uncharted shores. The Cook's Cove is renowned for its stunning natural beauty with its pristine beaches, clear turquoise waters, and lush greenery. And we were so fortunate to have this beautiful, clear day to experience it all firsthand. Late October is an early spring in New Zealand, which means that bays like this one offer a lot more privacy. With only a couple of more boats in a cove, we'll have the chance to experience this beautiful island just like Captain Cook did. And to make our experience more original and much richer, a boat similar to what Captain Cook might have sailed in these waters was just pulling out of the cove. As you already know, our travels are always followed by a special recipe. Cooking and baking on a boat is especially fun. In this episode, we'll explore how to make a very good banana bread, or we might just decide to turn this into a great cinnamon bread. Stay tuned, because even I don't know how this is gonna turn out. And while Doe is resting, we're gonna step out and do our initial exploration of the island. The curious child inside me never grew up, and it's in moments like these that childhood excitement is absolute. Right here on these shores, over 250 years ago, Captain Cook and his crew were doing the exact thing that we are doing right now. These are the same sights and sounds that greeted Captain Cook centuries ago. To this day, relentless waves on the north side of the island continue to carve their pathway to the calmer cove's water. Ooh, there comes a big one. Just one of the gems that you will experience and see if you come to the Cook's Landing Island. It's beautiful and we were very fortunate to have this um, real day and nice weather. One of the best ways to experience the island's beauty is to see it from above. I should mention that New Zealand's government is great at providing and maintaining wonderful hiking trails almost anywhere you go, which is exactly what we need after being on the boat for a few hours. And as you can see, our little tour guide was so eager to show us around.
everywhere you look there are beautiful vistas in every direction and there's so many opportunities to take beautiful photos the long uphill hike was so worth it because the views were simply stunning the island is only about two kilometers long and it goes east-west with the south coast offering two bays backed by sandy beaches the north side of the island is dominated by steep cliffs, waves, and is not as accessible. After doing some homework, I have learned that majority of the island is in private ownership. But the good news is that almost 50 acres is a public conservation land. When Captain Cook arrived to the island in 1769, he reported that there were two to 300 Maori living on the island. An interesting fact about the island is that island is pest free and it's home to a number of endangered bird species such as whitehead and brown kiwi. The twin lagoons in the central section of the island are the two most visited spots on the island. However, for me personally, this lookout was unforgettable. Somehow looking from afar and above helps you put things in perspective. And I couldn't help but to notice how incredibly small we are compared to all of this. The island is so beautiful that we decided to go back to a boat, get some rest and come back again to see the sunset. These well-traveled herbs never anticipated what was about to happen next. The Bay of Islands is one of the best places in New Zealand to view wild dolphins and migratory whales. Also fur seals native to New Zealand and penguins can often be spotted bobbing about in the water or basking on some rocks. As such a place and the experience like this one would be a great classroom for every child. There's no comparison between having a direct contact to something like this and learning it from the books. The evening is setting in and we're gonna head back to the island to experience the sunset. Except this time we're gonna do it the old fashioned way and we're gonna row instead of using the motor. What was stunning and beautiful few hours ago suddenly turned majestic. The golden hour was truly golden. It's most encouraging to know that New Zealand's government is doing all they can to preserve places like this and allowing nature to regenerate its beauty. It's time now to get some rest because tomorrow we have another big day ahead of us. Our next stop is Urupukapuka Island, which is the largest island in the Bay of Islands. This is a very popular stop for tourists, but especially for sailors. The weather was absolutely perfect and the views went on forever. And with these calm waters, I decided to go back into the kitchen and to continue to experiment with our banana bread that we started yesterday. Uh, this bread refused to rise yesterday, so it sat all night. You know, I, I was hoping this morning we're gonna have a beautiful dough, but it didn't happen. So instead of throwing it away, um, I added some uh, fresh yeast and it looks like it's finally cooperating. So we're gonna, you see, you have uh, nice bubbles forming in a dough, which is what should have happened in the first place. And I think it will be an absolute miracle if this bread turns out okay because uh, it sat all day yesterday all night and the fruit that's inside must be really well fermented so there are two options here this can turn out to be the best bread i ever made or absolutely the worst because we started with the as a banana bread then it turned into something else and something else and now it fermented so i'm curious to see what comes out of it it smells really good, really good. Food should never be wasted, especially when you are on a boat. Extra flavor. 
I think sometimes the um, best recipes are made this way. The only trouble is if this bread turns out to be good, I will not, I don't know how to replicate it. I put so many things in there, it will be hard to make exactly the same bread. I'm going to do my best to salvage the ingredients that we put in this banana slash cinnamon bread. I'm going to set the dough to rest and rise again while we take time to explore this beautiful island. From the moment I stepped onto this island, I understood why they call this island the jewel of Bay of Islands. I felt really thankful that I got to experience it at this particular time of the year when everything is fresh and green. And also, I got to visit it at the golden hour. The sun was preparing to set which added extra richness to the color and the depth to the shape of the island. Everything was so quiet and the only noises you can hear was the ocean and wind. With the nature, and our planet so beautiful, I sometimes wonder why did people invent amusement parks? Definitely one of the best places for hiking and for immersing yourself in a nature. The long hike and the fresh air worked up a great appetite, so we are heading back to make a dinner. On the menu tonight is traditional Italian dish called gnocchi. This is a fun and a great dish to make with family and friends. And I was very pleased that these came out pretty good. However, our banana slash cinnamon bread, well, that's a whole nother story. So I'm going back home to Temecula and I'm going to do this all over again and show you how to make a proper cinnamon bread. So we're going to do this the old fashioned way the proper way and the way my grandma would actually be proud of me, not like the one I did on a boat. The recipe starts with three cups of milk, one cup of oil, half a cup of sugar, and we'll bring it all to a little warm temperature. I'm going to show you these dishes that I will be using today. These are typical and traditional Serbian dishes, uh, and I like using them especially when I'm making old-fashioned recipe like cinnamon bread. So I'm gonna use one to make the dough and the other one to mix the sugar and cinnamon. We got our milk, now let's go get some fresh eggs. These are from our chickens and I only use them for special things because we only have two hens right now and we don't get a lot of eggs. But this is a special day and we're gonna use three egg yolks for this recipe. Good eggs are one of the key ingredients in this recipe because they will be bringing not only a good flavor, but also this rich orangey color. Now let's add a tablespoon of real vanilla. The next ingredient is lemon zest and you can use as much as you would like. I have a gigantic lemon in my hand. Uh, this came from our tree, and for some reason, this year, trees produce enormous lemons, which is great if you're after lemon zest. This is all starting to smell like ice cream because we have milk, eggs, and vanilla, sugar, of course, which are all basic ingredients that you uh, have in your ice cream. So, just by mixing this, the whole mixture smells like a vanilla ice cream. We are ready now to add dry yeast, two tablespoons of it. 
We'll let the yeast activate while we mix a cup of brown sugar and two teaspoons of cinnamon. Let's talk about the raisins and the walnuts, which we will add in a little bit. Both raisins and walnuts are optional. So if you don't like these ingredients, you don't have to use it, but I can't even imagine having a cinnamon bread without them, especially because these raisins were grown uh, here in our little vineyard. So every year we dry a bunch of them and then we use them in our recipes. We're gonna use one cup of raisins and one cup of chopped nuts. Now keep in mind, you can use white raisins or you can substitute walnuts for pecans. Look at all this yeast bubbling because it, it was in a perfect environment. So yeast is ready for flour, but before we add flour, I'm gonna add walnuts and raisins. Now these can be added a little bit later or you can add them now, whatever works for you. So basically we have all the ingredients in here right now. So all that's left to do is to bring in six cups of flour. I would suggest to add flour gradually. With the four cups of flour, those should look like this. And we will leave the dough like um, as it is for maybe another 10-15 minutes or until dough rises again. And then we're gonna add additional two cups of flour. So you remember that big lemon that we used for our dessert? I wanna show you the tree we're making. This tree is growing giants this year. Look at the size of this lemon. And just about every one on the tree is about the same size. And judging by the flowers of this year, the next batch will be just as big because normally lemons, lemon flower is not as big as this. These are gorgeous and they're extremely fragrant. Like, mm. Mm, 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 mm. And to make it even better, uh, we get to enjoy lemons just as a fruit, but then through their blossom, we get to enjoy lemons through honey as well because this brings uh, honey uh, will smell like lemons and that is something uh, very unique and very special check out our future raisins this particular wine is a white table grape and it will be great to make raisins and kids just for the record growing your own food is absolutely awesome I'm already looking forward to this year's harvest and to drying more raisins and then baking more desserts Our dough is looking beautiful and we are ready to move on with the additional two cups of flour. While I'm trying to come up with the precise measurements, I like you to keep one thing in mind. Ingredients can vary. So some might need a little bit more than six cups and some might need a little less. The goal is to create soft dough like this one. And that's why it's important to add flour gradually until your dough separates from a dish. We are letting dough rise again before we move to the finishing phase. Now we just want to take our time to incorporate all these ingredients in really well. Growing up, I would fight my mom to allow me to knead the bread dough. And she would always say, the more you knead it, the better it will be. Growing up, everybody who came to our house was served a homemade meal, especially people who came to work in fields. That meant that we needed to bake loaves and loaves of home-baked bread, and I loved doing it. If you had people coming to work for you, it was especially important to prepare rich and good homemade meals. A couple of large meals were served to all workers, and all the food was homegrown and homemade. It was an insult to go to store and buy store-bought food for the people who worked for you. 
and on the days when we baked a lot of bread my dad would sometimes fire up outside brick pizza oven and then we would bake all the bread in a individual portions in a amber and that bread was the best I love those old memories but let's get back to our recipe uh, basically you saw what I was doing with the dough now uh, we are just going to spread it out and what I'm doing here is if you notice I'm always starting from the middle and then I'm gently stretching the dough outward. Now um, halfway through just use your hands to shape it so it's more of a square like this and then continue to thin it out to the desired uh, dimension. For all of you kids who are watching this right now, keep in mind we're trying to save the bubbles inside the dough. So instead of pressing hard on the dough, we are just trying to lightly stretch it out. And you see, you can use your hands like this and then go back with the rolling pin and continue to shape it to the size of your baking pan. Okay kids, once again, the key here is to always start from the middle of the dough, just like I'm doing here. Once we've reached the desired shape and thickness, we're gonna add cinnamon and sugar. Now, if my mom was doing this, she would have first spread a handsome portion of a room temperature butter all over the dough before she pours the sugar and cinnamon. Instead of butter, I get used to using olive oil. So you can just sprinkle a little bit of olive oil on the cinnamon and sugar. Or if you prefer, you can take my mom's route and add some room temperature butter to the dough before you put sugar and cinnamon. Flip it, start rolling it nice and tight, and then just wrap it up like this. I would suggest that before you start rolling out the dough, you find the baking dish in which you're gonna bake it so that you can gauge the dough to the size of your baking dish. This is another dish that I brought from back home and this dish must have baked thousands of breads. And I asked my mom if I could have it because inside this dish, you have the layers and layers of that baked flavor. and the bread tastes the best when it's baked in this little dish. So I'm going to use it also for our cinnamon bread. Since you saw how we did our first one, the second one should be much easier. We're going to just repeat what we did. And while I'm doing this, I just want to bring uh, something to your attention. Uh, very few homes today have time to bake together and the reason I'm doing this is not just for the sake of a good taste and a homemade dish but it's also for the sake of creating that special environment and emotion and feeling in home when something like this is taking place. Fewer and fewer families spend time cooking and baking together. One of the reasons I do this program is to encourage you and to remind you how important it is to reclaim this kind of a practice back into your life and into your families. I had opportunity to work with countless children in the past decades, and I have never come across a child who didn't like to cook. The problem is just for us grown-ups to find time to do this together with our kids. Okay, let's get back to our cinnamon bread. And I don't know if you noticed with the first loaf how I placed it, but basically I am gonna face the ends inside. It's both ends will face each other like this. And then we're gonna let the dough rise once again before we bake it. I always like to add a little olive oil between the two loaves. So this way, as they rise and bake, they will not stick together the final rise and after that we can let the bread bake on 350 for about 40 minutes and then we'll reduce the temperature on 320 for additional 20 minutes when done it's important not to cut into bread right away instead let it cool off for a good two hours just take it out of the baking pan so that it doesn't accumulate moisture on the bottom 
you can put it on a cooling rack or you can put it on something like this and make sure to cover it so the cooling is gradual which will in return improve the texture and the moisture of your cinnamon bread. And here we have it, all natural homemade cinnamon bread. Most of my childhood mornings, especially on the weekends, would start with something like this. It would be so wonderful if we could bring some of these old world traditions into our modern lives. I hope this recipe was simple enough and if you try to make it, please let us know how it turned out. We are continuing with exploring New Zealand in our next episode. And next time, I'm taking you to an amazing island featuring some of the most beautiful trees. And we'll follow the trails to amazing sites like this natural waterfall. We'll revisit the history of this island and of course there's going to be a recipe. So in our next episode I'm going to show you how to make a great Mexican food. Thank you so much for watching and for joining me on my traveling and cooking adventures. From New Zealand to Temecula, it's been wonderful sharing it all with you. That's all for today. Thank you very much for joining me on my travels to New Zealand and for spending time with me in my kitchen and making cinnamon bread together with me. We will see you again soon on our next adventures and with the new recipe. Until then, stay well and take good care of yourself and those around you.